it'll probably take me a while to get into it, maybe. Dad walking through the memory veil, dragging a shovel alongside him, passing by previously dug holes. Dig holes? Use Helios 42 with plastic wrap? Shot in 60 frames per second for slow motion. And held. Camera low to the ground, following the room behind. Also try to carry a shovel, using it like a cane. Record some audio for the prologue clips. Future clips won't have sound. Dad approaches and plunges his shovel into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so does this sound bad or good to you? <laughs> Just... I think... Like you're not very, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not very deep. You're not but, as deep as him, but uh, you talk well. Uh -huh. like him. That that that's the main thing I was noticing too. Just that <laughs> that once I get into it, it's like I have fun, kind of like moving the the voice up and down like he does. Just not actually as low. Yeah, and you overall. might squeak a little more. Than yeah, <laughs> because I'm I'm going so overboard with it that it's hard not to to squeak because I squeak. Hello and welcome to our uh, Coco Festival. Coco. Mm. At first, we were considering doing this back in August, but at that point, we wouldn't have Coco. No. Hmm. Coco's always a plus. And Coco makes everything better. Mm -hmm. mm. We're here to talk about the behind-the-scenes story of making a short film on a time limit, which isn't new to us, but it's always a unique experience. Mm -hmm. Probably the, the most we've ever asked of ourselves on such a short <laughs> time period of time. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So should we just like start from the beginning, kind of set up? I can hmm. just... Yeah, it was Blimey Cow short film. Blimey Cow. Blimey Cow. Blimey Cow. Blimey Cow. Blimey cow. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we decided we were going to go to Blimey Con and then they announced the, that they were going to have another short film competition. Uh, I don't know what exactly the order was because Tucker dealt with more of the, the signing up stuff. Mm hmm. I don't know if sign ups were in, back in April or something. Mm hmm. Like a week or so before they revealed the parameters of what all needed to be included in your short film, Tucker was like, hey, you know what? I have this crazy idea to use Face App. I, I want to make that one of the parameters, just a personal parameter to use that in some way, shape, or form to make one of us look old, most likely. Yes, because young, <laughs> young is not good all the time. <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, I, I was on board with it. I was like, hey, okay, this sounds interesting. I like to experiment with things, different ideas and methods of making videos interesting. Yeah, and like, I spent a couple different nights probably just sending you wacky face app pictures. Uh-huh. I, I would always laugh hysterically whenever you would send them to me, and then I would freak Mom and Katie out with them. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it got to the point, like, I think I'd been sending them to you for a little while before I got the wacky idea to try to do it for video. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, naturally, the very first thing I wanted to try for video was a clip from Captain America Winter Soldier of Captain America being old in a different movie. Since we already have old footage of the recreate or digitalized footage of um, Chris Evans being old for Captain America, I was like, let's see how, how it stacks up. Yeah, 
compares. It got me intrigued by the idea, but mm -hmm. I think since that footage was pulled from YouTube and it was like highly compressed 720p footage, it had a lot of distortion and like artifacts around the face. Mm -hmm. So I was a little worried about that. Made kind of the whole area look painted. Yeah. And after that, I wanted to try it on footage that wasn't highly compressed. So I pulled a clip from a short film we made about a year ago. Even though it's still compressed footage, technically it's like it's not raw footage or anything, but um, it doesn't have as many compression artifacts as footage pulled from YouTube does. And converting that footage turned out a lot better because it didn't have nearly as much artifacts around the face. Yeah, and you sending it to me, it was less of a, whoa, that looks kind of weird, and more of a, whoa, you're old. <laughs> <laughs> so some improvement was made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and considering that process of converting the footage, even when it cooperates, it's still tedious. not, yeah, it's still tedious. I got to the point where I assumed that as one person doing it all myself, I could get about uh, three seconds of footage done in an hour. Yeah, so that kind of involves just throwing a timestamp on the footage, converting it to frames, and then taking a screenshot of every single frame. So you have like a log of all the frames. And then moving that footage to a phone or a device that has the face app and converting every single frame, exporting those frames back to the computer and then masking out either the face app logo or the um, timestamp with the frame number on it. A few things that happens when it gets exported from face app. It exports each photo with a random name or the name has a number on it. So yeah, since Windows wants to make everything numerically in order or alphabetical, all the face app photos are out of order. So you have to pick and choose them and put them back in the right place and that's where the frame number comes in handy. Yes, it would be pretty much impossible if you didn't have that timestamp to count the frames. Yes. So, keeping in mind that three seconds of footage takes an hour with one person, I was hoping that teaming up so that one person could be doing stuff on the computer while the other person is converting the frames on the phone, I was hoping it would about double um, the amount of footage we could get done. But... That's not what FaceApp wanted. No, oh, FaceApp knows more than we thought it did. It, it doesn't want you to <laughs> to abuse it in the way that we did. Yeah, but more on that later. We won't jump to that immediately. Yeah. We're telling the story. So yeah, considering I decided that I wanted to use FaceApp for our short film somehow, mm -hmm. I was like waiting with bated breath for when... Josh would finally announce the short film contest because he hadn't confirmed it yet that it was happening like up until just a couple weeks away or maybe three weeks away or so. I don't know because time was going so fast. I had just moved into a new house, which is where we are right now. <gasps> Look around. That's where it's the a whole new world. Are you uh, Aladdin now? No. <laughs> it's where the interior shots were filmed of the short film yes so yeah i was just moved into a new house and was anticipating in, in, anticipating josh's announcement of the short film contest uh-huh and i was very happy when he said it was going to take o take place over a full week so i was like hey, ooh, we'll have plenty of time to convert frames to face app yeah. With a full week. Yeah, technically that is true. We would have had plenty of time, but then we ended up coming up with a story that we thought was so important to get right before we started filming that we yeah. took about the entire week just trying to get the thing written. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up only using about... 40% of the original script. Yeah, we we were both kind of in a very particular mood. So like we we kind of would bicker a lot just about the details that don't really matter in the long run. That could have been fixed in the editing room like uh -huh. 
just the order of shots, basically. Since it's yeah. all kind of shot mm -hmm. out, out of chronological order, there was going to be a lot more of that in the original script. And I think part of it was just because, like, the shots were the only thing I could think of to change, but I felt like there were a lot of things that I would have liked to do differently, which is why it's it's a good thing that it didn't really work out the way either of us intended, because then it, it was better. Neither of us got our way. Yeah. It wasn't our original way. So like it was fair. Yeah, we um end up working together a lot more on the reshoots. Mm-hmm. Just writing this, that decision. So yeah, of course, if anyone has not watched their short film, I recommend you watch it before we move much further because we will mm -hmm. be talking spoilers, spoilers and the story behind it. Because mm -hmm. I think as vague as we ended up going, I'm assuming not a lot of people completely understood everything that was going mm -hmm. on that we intended. It's not their fault. We made it vague. Yeah. Especially uh, thinking about it afterwards, I, I did kind of come to the conclusion that I think it is best left sort of up to interpretation, but I do think there it, we should talk about kind of Our what went into it. Yeah. Like what we were thinking of when we made it. Mm -hmm. Not to tell people how to interpret it, just to tell yeah. people this but, is what happened that led to it. Yeah, that the final version is the canon version and anything else is and may not be canon. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, just just for fun. Mm -hmm. So how much did you want to get into plot elements? Do you feel like we shouldn't talk much about what we originally intended for the plot and backstory? I mean, we can. I mean, it, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, mm -hmm. Because there's, there's a reason that I could explain why kind of what led to that comment I made. Um, but I didn't know it's it's somewhat complicated, so I didn't know if it was something I needed to get in with the with this conversation or not. Um, I see. And if if I did get into it, it would make more sense to come kind of after the fact, since it was it was something that I thought of during the like reception of the the video, like after the contest. So I figured if I if I bring it up at all, it would be more at that point. But like I said, it's really complicated, so I don't know if it needs to be said. Could be said, but then if we feel like it doesn't work in the video, we can dig it out. But yeah. I'd still be curious to know your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Since the parameters were released late Sunday night, mm -hmm. did I text them to you or s email them to you? Yeah, you were emailing things to me a lot because I had, I had just figured out my uh, email. So you were utilizing that fact. Yeah, and then uh, it started... Uh, figuring out the story and yeah I was highly distracted I have learned that it takes me a lot longer to process dramatic stories than comedy same for me like comparing any creative work I've tried to do usually if I do it nonsensical and humorous then it just kind of flows and come right, comes right off of my brain and my hands into the paper or if I'm ad-libbing then it's camera but then the more dramatic I go, the more time it takes, it seems like. And that's what I've learned with video making and writing. Yeah, because that was something with our last short film. With the uh, September 2018 short film contest, we wanted originally to go for a dramatic story. But then we couldn't break the story and end up scrapping it and mm -hmm. going with a very quickly written or quickly written on my standards it still took me like four hours to write it or something but i don't know a, a very quickly written comedic short mm -hmm. um, and i didn't feel like i had as much emotions tied up into that one so it was a little bit less of a stressful experience <laughs> yes yeah because with the with the first version or the first possibility we were going with, it seemed like the longer it went, the more the sinking feeling grew. And I was like, oh, I don't know about this. This doesn't seem like it, we're not ready for this. Mm -hmm. Is and the it, conclusion we drew. And that one was basically just a weekend. Yeah. So with this one, I really wanted, if I had a good idea for a dramatic short, I wanted to try to make it work since we had a whole week. Mm -hmm. That first night, I thought it was best to work out the characters first and then let the story flow naturally from that. Um, so the first things I had kind of figured out was that it was kind of like a 
estranged father and son relationship. Um, father may have been an intellectual workaholic when his son was younger, and their relationship may have been a little strained from that and led the son to be a little bit um, resentful. I guess vaguely more angry uh, cats in the cradle <laughs> situation almost. Maybe. Yeah. And the dad was some sort of inventor to the point where he could create something. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't go into how he was able to create it because we yeah. haven't really thought about that much. Uh -huh. That might be best left to the realms of imagination. Yeah. But anyway, as the dad grew older, he came to want that time back that he either had or didn't have with his son. So with his intellectual inventor side, he creates a machine to re-experience his memories. And then he soon learns that the memories disappear once he experiences them like he's consuming them. So then after that, instead of stopping, he starts writing them down. So they're not completely lost. I don't know if we need to go into all the details. Okay. At, the, at this point, anyway. What? Okay, what's your idea to go for next? I don't know. Um, Because I was just thinking behind the scenes commentary, like just kind of describe the progression of events sort of that, mm -hmm. that led to it. So like the, the Monday after they released it, then we talked about it and Tucker, you pitched what you had and we had a lot of kind of bouncing off like you would describe what you were thinking then I would have kind of interpretations that then you could use and so like if you remember some of your notes then that could probably um tell you what all we came up with because like with some of the other stuff like I felt like it was a little easier to like identify that like you were the one actually kind of writing and then like with this one I felt like the I felt like it was more like kind of hours hours to like like I was, I felt glad that I was able to help. Yes, you did help. I just wish I wasn't so particular. I mean, and part of it was because I was being particular too. In some instances, like, like I was getting sort of annoyed when you would do certain things with your particularness, but then I would realize that I was kind of doing that too in other situations. So, mm -hmm. you would often write scenes, and then I would look at the scene and be like. Eh, that's not really the direction I was going for and write it off and I kind of felt bad about that because you were actually you're a much faster writer than me so I feel bad that I'm not utilizing your fast writing a lot like mm -hmm. looking back a lot of times like I'll be happy about something because I'm like oh yeah I wrote it and I had inspiration and stuff but then sometimes in retrospect I'm like you can tell that that's kind of like the, the first draft fast written stuff mm -hmm. I was able to get a few like rough pages written of stuff at work which I was glad that I'm able to listen to music at work so I put on film scores yeah I've heard instrumental stuff is a lot better to listen to when you're writing so that's what I try to do um recently uh -huh. for me usually either instrumental instrumental stuff or things I'm really familiar with that kind of fade to the background yeah I don't know everything I listen to but I know super 8 I think was the one that had the most results or was the easiest to write to. Mm -hmm. I listened to that one a couple of times, I think. Since I already knew the style I was going for with the film scores, I wanted to pick film scores that would be similar enough to those themes that I was going for, even though I still worked in like How to Train Your Dragon stuff every once in a while. Cause, you you know, just have to do that. Yeah, you have to, even though it's not like some big epic dragon story. Mm-hmm. Yo. 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 Dragons, yo. Dragons, yo. So yeah, I would have really, really rough pages of notes that I would bring home from work and try to type out and figure them out when I got home. And then... And I, I think, would come over in the morning and see what you had. Yeah. What do you and got for me? Even with the first script that we tried to film, I think there was a lot of things that had to develop over the days. So it mm -hmm. wasn't a complete waste of time that we spent that much time writing because there was like things with the index cards that we had to come up with Yeah. later on. Because like, yeah, Monday we were kind of going over the, the basic plot and bouncing the ideas off of each other. And then we knew that I needed to build a set. So that was that was part of it. But yeah, so you like you 
were writing because you needed time to do that and so then i would be bringing stuff back and forth from home and hardware stores trying to to set up a little lab area i think we had a little bit of a or a difference in opinion on how subtle the original script should be i remember you thinking it was a little bit too much exposition yeah and that was the main thing i was trying to restructure with the scene that ended up getting cut we needed to find a way of dropping hints of what was going on but i felt like yeah it wasn't really done too well because it was basically just talking about what was going on yeah and i was totally aware of that which kind of annoyed me that you were pointing out because i was just trying to get something done and you were telling me what was wrong with it but it was things that i already knew what was wrong with it but i was just uh -huh. going to live with in order to get the project done and then i can't remember any, any circumstances but that's another example of like we were kind of doing the same thing to each other that was bugging ourselves i knew it had the original script had way too much exposition mm -hmm. but i just didn't really know at first any other way to do it and i just wanted to get something done yeah like i think i mentioned before we may have cut either 50 percent of what we originally had i don't know exactly mm -hmm. but it's probably a good thing because mm -hmm. it would have run way too long if we did the video exactly to the original script because the video we have now ended up being four and a half minutes we were pushing the the five minute boundary as it was so probably was best that we decided to cut that before we edited it and realized uh oh this isn't gonna work yeah we we gotta do something different may have been almost too late if we had uh gone gung-ho with it mm -hmm. gone gung-ho and ended up doing all of it yeah like if we were trying to do everything we were planning but then only realized it wasn't going to work in the editing process, then it may have not worked at all. Yeah, but we would have had all the footage, so yeah, we could have made true. something. Just time crunches. Yeah. Think about midway through the week, or maybe at the beginning of the week, I don't know. I ended up deciding to take Friday off of work to give us a little extra time to film, which probably helped. Yeah. The first thing we wanted to film was the memory veil sequence is how we called it um underneath this row of cedar trees on our parents property yeah it's the windbreak besides the house and when we were kids we had hollowed it out or you older kids had i was uh, the youngest so i came around and it was already a thing and i was like hey this is hollowed out inside yeah so it's a it's a little grove and like over the the previous spring and summer seasons, I had been into photography and things, and we had discovered it as a really beautiful place to take pictures. Mm -hmm. So I had always wanted to film some sort of video, if not short film, in that area. So that was another kind of parameter that I wanted was to, if it worked out, mm -hmm. to film a scene in those cedar trees because I knew it looked so good. Yeah. And I also got to use some lenses that I hadn't gotten to use yet, or one lens at least. Um, and, and if you're going to start talking about that, I'll, I'll just turn oh, it out. Because you don't know anything about the lenses? <laughs> no, just anytime you're talking about, oh, uh, ooh, I think I know this lens will be good for this situation. I'm going to use that lens. I was just like, okay, <laughs> good for you. If you if you know all the, the exact differences, that's you're, then you're, you're studying up. <laughs> Yeast. I, did I just say yeast? Yeast. <laughs> yeast. <laughs> but yeah, it's all Greek to me. Is that the, the language people use? Um, I was about to say it's all French. But I'm... It's all Greek. I don't it's know. All Latin. Latin. Anyway, for the memory veil sequence, we filmed everything in 60 frames a second So because I knew I wanted to slow it down a little bit. Um, to make it feel a little more uh, eerie, um, dreamlike or eerie, yeah, yeah, um, and smooth, psychedelic, psychedelic. Except it's so mellow. Yeah, so mellow, mellow psychedelicness. And we learned the valuable lesson that you should not roll around in the underbrush. Yeah, yeah. That was one thing we developed 
some reactions. Yeah, I I had never had so many bug bites at one time. My legs were just like on fire with itchies and and <laughs> that made <laughs> all the the tense times to come even more tense because I was constantly annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. I warned you to put some off or spray some off on you. I guess growing up, I never realized that off was mostly to stop them from biting. I was thinking of it more if they're bugging you, then it would keep them away. So then for some reason, that's just my default. Then, okay, if if the bugs aren't swarming me and annoying me, then I don't need off. But I I was wrong. I I put off on. Off. You you put on off. Off. Off on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um uh-huh. anyway, so I just got bug bites around my ankles a little bit, I think. Yeah. They like your sock area. Yeah. They liked all of me. All of you. But yeah, bug bites were the first thing to come. And then the poison ivy. Poison ivy. Yeah, I think dad did go back one of the first times to where I was working and he did find some poison ivy looking stuff. But I've had some pretty bad outbreaks in the past and most of the time i feel like it was in the winter and i was wearing long sleeves but somehow i got it all over my arms and and like even like my neck and chest a couple of times but uh so yeah that was fun yeah though it it wasn't that bad it was just a spot along my arm since you still live at home mom and dad did they take you to the doctor or just call the doctor? I think they just called the doctor. I don't remember going, but yeah, they got me some allergy medicine. And after I heard the possible side effects, I was like, uh, I don't think I should take that if I'm going to be driving. Uh huh. It was like, yeah, like either loopiness or grouchiness or just something like that. So I don't, I didn't feel the effects too much because I was taking it all while we were on the trip to BlimeyCon. But I did notice it. I think that's one reason why in the evenings I crashed so hard. I thought like the first couple days it was probably just because of socialization that since I'm an introvert, I I can enjoy talking to people and it is distracting enough that I feel good. But then as soon as it was done, it was like, <sighs> I was <laughs> and just each day kept getting worse and worse. So there were, the last day or two, I do think I was a little bit like just sort of out of it and like I had a headache but then I didn't realize I did until the evening so, mm-hmm. so there's there's some things where I look back and like certain behavioral traits that I expressed I'm like I'm hoping that was the drugs <laughs> <laughs> let's blame it on the drugs yeah hugs not drugs hugs not drugs I'm not all that big on hugs either how dare you <laughs> Underneath the trees, there was a lot more holes that didn't show up on the camera. But we we want to make sure, we want to thank those holes, even though they didn't didn't make it on screen, but they were there. Yes. Um, They participated. Yes. they, They played their part well as holes in the ground. Yes. They're probably still there, waiting. Yeah, if we never paid them. No. We should drop a coin in each one and then fill them back up. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know why I started uh, trading the holes like extras. (laughs) It's it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. How many holes would you say we had? Uh, Mm, 30? Or was it more than that, you think? uh, That's probably be... About accurate, I would say that'd be on the lighter side. Yeah. Um, but yeah. We were digging holes. Yeah, we wanted to represent the memories. Yeah. That had been dug up. And we wanted mm-hmm. it to be kind of like a like a, a shocking thing that there was so many holes. Like if it was um in the original script where it explained what was going on a little bit more in the final version. Um, when people didn't know what was going on as much and you couldn't see as many holes, then I wasn't sure if it was as effective, but you can still see some holes. Yeah. I think that was one of the things that like talking to people afterwards, like kind of 
caught their attention at first. Like, hmm, what's going on here? What's with all the holes? <laughs> so it was effective. But you did a good job um, handling the camera in those shots. Thank you. Yeah. I know you. I forgot about that. You get a little confused sometimes when I try to tell you camera things. Yeah. But you can still hold a camera. Yeah. I can point and shoot. Just you can basically explain yeah. like the the uh-huh. exposure brackets and just tell you to adjust the the um mm-hmm. the wheel that controls the uh, zoom and focus. No. The wheel that controls the frame rate. The frame rate to adjust the exposure. I controlled frame rate? Well, it didn't change it from sixty frames a second. Sixty frames a second was the minimum it could go, but it will actually take in more frames than that in order to make the scene dimmer it'll take in more frames and then if you have it set at 60 for what that camera is actually taking in it'll be huh. more exposed i didn't know that you probably just yeah <laughs> my basic understanding is just move that wheel yes but you did control the zoom because it was a manual yeah. lens or a manual focus lens mm-hmm. and i had learned some of that from just making my own videos just how to how to set up focus and stuff like that so Mm -hmm. but you don't usually handheld your own videos because you can't really do that (laughs) (laughs) no i can't yeah manual focus yeah i wonder if loggers ever try to manual focus just they can probably do it but it's just a lot more concentration just their their arm is just constantly up on the the (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like they like it's they're kind of putting their arm on the cam on the shoulder of the camera just like okay i'm gonna keep you in focus now <laughs> just stare down my arm as i'm talking to you oh buttercup Aww. is hanging out with him yeah she's a smoochy little baby just taking a few pictures so i got a example did you get a text what does your phone say I shouldn't read this now. It's a long message. <gasps> it's a long message from who? Oh, okay. <laughs> from Sarah. Okay. Don't stare at me like that. Oh. I've, I'm just staring at you like I've been staring at you this entire time. Okay. So yeah, what were we talking about? Cameras. Yes. Cameras. Manual focus. Cameramanship. Oh, Even though award-winning I... cinematography, yeah, ain't that something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happened. I think. That, yeah, I guess I thank the voters. I suppose. Yes, yes, everyone that saw it and thought, "Hey, oh, I I noticed that." Yes, thank you. Got that thirty-five millimeter Rokinon cine lens. You know what that means? Um. I'm just gonna say yes. Okay. No. <laughs> um, you you were talking to me, but then you got all echoey and far away. <laughs> and I did have a 16 millimeter as well, which I wasn't sure if I should have used that in a few shots to get a wider angle of the holes. But the the smaller field of view that the 30 mi- 35 millimeter gave was a little bit more um maybe made more mystery because since you couldn't see as much Mm -hmm. maybe i know you're talking about measurements i I hear millimeters yes i understand mystery okay yeah you know how your your lens you have zooms yeah it'd be like when it's zoomed out all the way compared to like where it is in the middle range sort of like Mm. because i think yours goes to 18 at the widest and then 55 at the farthest mm-hmm. so the 35 would be a little bit in between and then 16 would be like is that the widest ah you understand that boy for the most part okay oh yeah fun fact um the camera we filmed on was an ADD or a Canon ADD that was actually purchased after Josh posted in the creative group a link to a uh, sale on woot.com. The only thing I've ever purchased purchased on woot.com. Hmm. And it was 
that ADD that filmed the short film. And it arrived in the mail one of the days I was working on the short story contest. Imagine that. It all comes together. It, it all it comes full circle. Yeah. So I was like completely distracted that day. Mm -hmm. It was like the day I had to write that short story. It was like Saturday. Just yeah, you had your your new toy. Yes. He just wiggled his eyebrows. Um, when when you're starting the fun fact, for some reason my mind went to uh, it had started beforehand, but I feel like th this uh working together so often is when it kind of became a real thing the you calling me sunny and then me um or calling me son or boy or child or stuff like that and then me responding with dad or papa so it, it was partially um just joking and then partially kind of to get into character a little bit like hey well i'm going to be playing your son so okay papa <laughs> <laughs> sure thing dad <laughs> father son Father. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't know. No, Buzz, I am your father. No. I don't know. No, it's not possible. No. <laughs> anyway. So, we felt like we had to rush mm -hmm. the memory veil sequence. Because in our original script, I had a purpose for takeout containers. You know, food, hunger, all that. Yeah, um, that was one of the parameters in case, I mean, I assume people would probably remember because anyone watching this probably watched the, the first one is in, is in the know. But yeah, supposed to under five minutes and deal with concepts of hunger. So uh, something was, like that. Those were the main parameters for the contest. And like a few like had to be blinking or something in a blinky blank, blank, blinky blank, 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 blank. I'd have a certain line you had to use. Uh, like with the, the first film. That, that was we, when I knew. Yeah, that was when I knew. Was well, I felt like it was really similar to the first line. What was the first line? Like, like this one was, that was how I knew. And then the first contest that we did was like, that was when we knew or, <laughs> or no. I knew what I had to do. Something oh, yeah, like that. I knew what I had to do. And this is when I knew. Yeah, so, so it's like so. Josh must have something about knowing things. I guess. <laughs> what'll What'll be the the next one? Now I know. <laughs> I've always known. I've always known. That's it. <laughs> anyway, did I interrupt you? Were you on the middle of something like talking about? Oh, the um the the containers. Yes. The takeout containers. containers. So we felt like we were on a time limit mm -hmm. because the only place where I was really aware that would have like the right kind of takeout containers was going to close. So we had to like wrap up filming in time to go get takeout and eat it for supper. And then, um, cause we were hungry and we uh, were very hungry. Yeah. And then use those while we filmed that night. So yeah, we ended up having burgers and fries. It helped situations like going on vacations or then I realized it on a vacation and then I feel like that kind of kickstarted it that I will now eat burgers with buns. For some reason, that was always a thing before that I never wanted to eat a burger with a bun. Uh, but then now it's like specifically burger with a bun and bacon and cheese. That works well. Maybe that's why you gained some weight. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I, I moved away from protein style. What have I done to myself? Oh. We can cut that out if you don't want people to know you gained some weight. I mean, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not sensitive. You're not sensitive? Like, like I was saying before, it could be mostly muscle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was Cause, it's called mostly muscle. Because I recently was able to do a pull-up. <laughs> I, I thought to, you could do pull-ups. Yeah, I, I've been able to do pull-ups for a while. Just like I would jump up, grab the bar, just see how, how long I could hold it there. Or I would put my feet up on the couch nearby and then kind of take that would take some of the pressure off my fingers i guess maybe the main thing that happened recently was that i could actually sort of like pull With myself up enough to like switch one hand at a time uh. so i was like pulling myself up switching hand pulling myself up switching the other hand but um i can only do that a couple of times and i'm like i can't art it 
and I needed to drop. So. Oh. But yeah. Anyway. Okay. He probably didn't need to <laughs> talk about that, but oh well. Yeah, you can't put okay. the toothpaste back in the tube. Yeah, but you can put the recording back in the microphone. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, but you can wash it down the drain. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> I guess. I mean, hopefully it won't clog up anything. Hopefully not. Anyway, where were we? Take out food. Well, I was Hunger. I was trying to think of a way to transition back cuz I think I wanted to talk about the index cards. I should run and get some of those cuz some of the ones were funny that we created too. Yeah. Along with what we'd used for half of them. Uh-huh. A while back for our older brother Wyatt's birthday, I made a supercut of the audio of um how do I explain it to people who don't know what it is? Just there's there's these videos. People doing voiceovers or redubbing Star Wars and giving yeah. C-3PO uh, new dialogue. Yes. <laughs> to make him creepio. Creepio, indeed. Hi, Duke. Did this Fa 2 character have Squatulate? He strikes me as a free spirit, wandering around, leading people from one adventure to the next. He might as well be named Fart McGuffin 2D2. We'll call him Fart McMuffin for short. We'll be quite the trio. Duke, Friend Besto, and Fart McMuffin. Um, so we got a kick out of it anyway. A couple years ago, I made a super cut of it and like wrote every individual line out on cards and then like reordered them. Mm -hmm. um, to kind of make them kind of sound like they go together in a different way. Yeah, like a like nowadays I see a lot of those like this out of context videos where sometimes they'll almost try to to work it into a a new context. So mm. similar to that. Yeah. So I still kept all those cards. So mm. since we came up with the idea to have the father write memories out on index cards. I was like, hey, we don't have to individually show all of them, so we can just, we just need some prop index cards. So, use some of those lines from Creepio footage and put them on the wall. I don't know if the YouTube is, the YouTube version is high quality enough, but on the computer, I paused it and you can actually read a little bit of a Creepio card. Uh huh. That could be something if we wanted to, to read a couple of those. Mm hmm. So, we got the cards. Whoops. We got the cards. You can pull out some. Ooh. Emmett's got the Creepio cards. I've got the Creepio cards. I got the cards that we made custom for the, the video. Yes. That actually have something to do with uh, the storyline. Yes, hello. I'll take two shoes and three more for my friend. That's five shoes. Two plus three equals five. Por favor. And yeah, with the, the cards that we created for the video, there's a lot that are um, just joke cards. Like, yes. here's one from Emmett. Hello, darkness, my old friend. That was probably because I had I made a joke about that um, in my Fallout video. And so that was fresh on my mind. Mm. Then here's one from me. I just wasted 10 seconds of your life. That was really out of key. <laughs> but I wasn't I, trying. I couldn't tell if you're trying to. I didn't think I you was were like, trying to sing, but then you started to sing at the end, and was like, "That's not right." I was <laughs> only doing it halfway. Of your life. <laughs> Ten seconds. Duke, I'm going to be honest with you. This place needs to be purified immediately. <laughs> Here's one. You gotta run, 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 jump. I can be your backpack while you run. Is that even the right lyrics? I don't even know. Yeah, I that think is. so. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh, potatoes and molasses. They're so much sweeter than algebra classes if you're... I can never remember the lyrics. No. And I feel bad about that. I envy your resolve, far too. Look at you, as cool as a cucumber. You actually do look kind of like a cucumber, too. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> this one you wrote. It says you should work a little harder on improving your low self-esteem, you stupid freak. <laughs> That's a weird owl lyric. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. It all makes sense now. I was like, That's mean. <laughs> oh. 
That's your horoscope for today. <laughs> but, uh, okay. Okie dokie. That, yeah, there are a lot of things that, like, when, when we got a, a Weird Al CD, that, like, there's random lines that I got stuck in my head <laughs> that now I, I can't, I can't purposefully remember them. Just every now and then they come back. And I'm like, I just need to write this down somewhere. Mm hmm. We went fishing with science? There were a lot of cards that I kind of, um, like, I think, like, I, it was sort of a progression. Uh, I can't remember if that was one of them or not. I was just thinking, like, they, oh, they, they went fishing, but since he's an adventurer, they went fishing with science, maybe. Oh, uh, okay. I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? Yes. These are all things that were up on that wall. <laughs> yes. In such a serious, just, yeah, not, not like grim, but somber. In a very somber short film, if you look closely, this is the insanity that happened on the walls. Hey. Okay, I'm hoping I can read this. Your writing's a little hard to read. This That's life... a lot more gracious than you usually are. Well, maybe I'm being nice. <laughs> yep. This life sentence that I'm serving, I'll admit that I'm every bit deserving, but the beauty of grace is that it makes life not fair. Yep. I have that song stuck in my head as well. I mean, when do I not have that song stuck in my head? It's a good song. Listen, Duke, I can't quite explain it, but I have a good feeling about you. We should be best friends. We heard to burgle your turts. Yes, we are. Is this from something? But what about the rocks? But what about the rocks? We, we were digging, but then we, we found these, these oh, rocks. okay. Why is that? <laughs> I feel like I had asked you that when uh, we were making the cards. Yeah, you did, I think. Oh. I, and, and normally you're the one that quotes Garden I, Wall. I haven't watched it this season yet. <gasps> I feel like, like I'm a failure. <sighs> I'm assuming this is Weird Al, too, but I can't read it. <laughs> Give it to me, and I will translate my handwriting for you. My, my, this here Anakin guy. Maybe Vader someday later. Now he's just a small fry. Yes. Um, he left his home and kissed his mommy goodbye, saying soon I'm going to be a Jedi. You can call me friend Besto. How does that sound? Everyone told me not to stroll on that beach. Woohoo. <laughs> Seagull's going to come and poke in the coconut. And they did. Mm -mm. And they did. Had me going like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> People are going to be so confused when they read or listen to this. Don't click that pin on my shoulder, son. I assume that was the situation where I was clicking a pin on your shoulder. <laughs> I must say. We'll call him Fart McGuffin for short. We'll be quite the trio. Duke, Friend Besto, and Fart McGuffin. <laughs> Fart McGuffin. Anyway, got that messed up. Okay, I think. Anyway, that's yeah. probably the gist of it. Yeah, probably. You've seen enough. Heard enough. You've heard enough. Yes. Where were we? Oh, yeah. I don't know. We talked about the poison ivy a little bit. I didn't. don't think I said everything about my reaction. Of course, I don't want to describe it all in, in, in vivid detail. Tell us exactly what happened to your poison ivy rash. <laughs> anyway, you were medicated, so yours went away a little faster than mine. I was medicated, yes. Um, I, mine kept spreading and like got in between my fingers Ew. while we were at BlimeyCon. So it was like I had little poison ivy bumps in between my fingers, and it was. I was hoping no one noticed. Um, but anyway. you you looked it up and said it wasn't spreadable. Yeah, I looked. It was. It's not contagious. Yeah, I I would have been very 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 anxious if it was contagious. Uh -huh. Like I'm sorry, everybody. I was the one that caused the poison ivy outbreak. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to apologize to everyone in advance for this. <laughs> uh, that situation would have been if the kitten would have gotten some in someone's pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, well, moving oh, on. Well. Yeah, filming that night after we got the yeah. takeout containers. It <clears throat> still took a little while to get ready because it's... We always take so long to set everything up. I hope it's not just me, but I always take a long time to process before I mm -hmm. actually film something. I mean, a lot of times I'll take a while setting up to with my solo videos, but 
But yeah, it seems like a lot of times you'll be like, okay, I'm ready to film. And then I'll, I'll be getting ready and then I'll be waiting and waiting while you're just fiddling with the camera for or the lights time. yeah or the lenses or you know all those um, buttons and dials yeah i still would like to teach you the things that i know sometimes so i'll learn at some point i just i learn best from experience mm -hmm. so that i actually have something to relate it to in my mind instead of just technical jargon what did we film next probably the um Stuff at I the door, maybe? Yeah, I think we tried to grow, go in chronological from there. Because, yeah, like, I was so particular in the writing stage. I was, like, had a distinct vision of how I wanted the first scene in the house to go. Mm -hmm. The, like, how I wanted there to be, like, inter interesting transitions and things. Mm -hmm. So we spent a lot of time trying to like film that and like even more time in the writing stage like of me just trying to imagine what it would be like mm -hmm. um, we did end up filming that I don't know how well it turned out yet because at this point of our talking we haven't really gotten all the deleted scenes all edited together yet uh huh so you've just had a lot on your plate in the last couple months yeah that scene will be available to view in this video yay I don't know if there's anything I should do to set it up at all first. In the original script, we would have started with the same thing with the footage of the memory veil. Mm -hmm, just not had the voiceover. Yeah, cut the voiceover. Because the voiceover was actually a salvaged line from the, the scene we scrapped because it had way too much exposition. So. Yeah. Would have went from the memory veil scene into this clip we will show now. Are you still there? Dead? Hey, Eddie. Is that really you? grown so much. Yeah, that's how it works. Well, I'm just stand out there. Come on in. Well, I hope you like takeout. Sure. So what's in there? Oh, well, that's where I work. You never did finish that treehouse before we moved. You were such a perfectionist. I hid under that lumber pile for what felt like hours before you guys finally found me. With these deleted scenes, I was considering converting all the deleted scenes to, with the Face app since we have all this time. But the more I thought about it, I was like... No. No, I don't think I will. And I was most definitely convinced that I would not even try to convert anything more than I had to because just dealing with that Captain America clip, the face app was doing this really obnoxious thing where it would change the resolution of the frames you exported from it. The majority of the frames are in 1920 by 1080, which is what I exported them from the Premiere in but it would kick them out at like random smaller frame resolution. So I would have to resize all the frames to match. It took a little time, but- All the things we had to deal with. Yeah, it, it did that a little bit for one clip when we were actually making the short film. Mm -hmm. But we'll get into more difficulties later. Yeah. 
were we about exhausted after we had filmed that first scene, like before we got into the other conversation? Yeah, we were pretty tired the entire time. I was anyway. Yeah, were we like, was that when we decided that to take a nap? Because I can't remember if we filmed any of you on the couch. I feel like we did, because I know we napped from midnight to two. Yeah, or at least you napped. Yeah, I I napped because you were too stressed to sleep. Yeah, because that was a big deal. Like, I tend to get overstressed about things, and then I tell you, like, I flip-flop whether to do things or not, and then I tell you about it, and you tend to get really just annoyed with me when I flip-flop around. Uh-huh. Um, it seems like that's one of those things that, with the, the short film, you kind of came to light a few times. So I was like, okay, is this going to be a thing? At that point when we had not gotten very much filmed, I was really stressed. And I was thinking we should definitely try to sleep because I, I had been staying up really late and getting up early um, the last couple days just to be able to write. So I was already like running on just a couple hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. And I was stressed about getting enough sleep in order to drive to Nashville because we would have to leave just a couple days after we finished the short film. So I was in a fit of insomnia or panic when we tried to take a nap. Because um, mm -hmm. a lot of times, like, you know, when that that's happened to me sometimes where for some reason when you lay down and you don't have anything to do to distract yourself, your brain goes off the rails with worries. And... Yeah, I was tired, but I wasn't like my brain wasn't going to sleep. Mm -hmm. And that was that was part of the reason why I needed a nap, because I kept almost falling asleep while we were filming. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see it's getting close to 2 o'clock in the morning, which was when we said we were going to reconvene and film again. Mm -hmm. Got to the point where I wanted to give up if I was going to be unhealthy in a sleep state for BlimeyCon. So I got up and and you had been sleeping just fine. <laughs> I mean, not entirely fine. <laughs> not entirely fine. Yeah, just... And you were not happy that I was recommending or worried and thinking that we shouldn't try to finish this story. I, I can't remember the stages of what happened. Because, like, if you had, if you weren't wanting to finish at that point, I don't know why we then stayed up. Because, like, at some point we, we did decide to go ahead and finish it. Maybe I talked you out of it. I was worried about um, not being able to finish it and not getting enough sleep for BlimeyCon. Yeah. So that's my first recommendation. And I think just your opposition to giving up um, motivated me to think maybe it's possible that maybe we should keep going. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I hadn't gotten a nap, but we just kept on picking up from where we left off and tried to film the rest of the conversation. We started with just filming your clips. And this story from the beginning was originally supposed to be serious. A yeah. lot of the themes of it, I don't think should be taken lightly. Like there's kind of- No, just a, a yeah. estranged parent-child mm -hmm. relationships and kind of some parallels to like mental health and stuff. Yeah, mental health and sometimes like self-destructive behavior and stuff. With all that said, there got to a point where this conversation felt off like I hadn't written it well enough. Uh -huh. There was a certain line that we got to that was... I just, I kept trying it. I didn't know what exactly I was supposed to be doing because I'm not a professional actor and it, it wasn't... It's not a professionally written line. Yeah, so just, I kept on trying to deliver it straight and then you kept cracking up. <laughs> yeah. Without context, I don't know if we should, sh when we should show that clip. We, you won't know the context yet in the conversation. We don't have my takes of the serious version. We never took my takes. Are you using your memories of me to get high? What? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this line was... This is a stupid line, but you know what? Um... Are you using your memories of me to get high? <laughs> I don't know why I can't stop laughing. Try put a little like 
Oh, oh. Gruffness. <laughs> That's you. Is hot? You're like, uh, uh, do you remember his immediate high? He's like, his immediate high. So, kind of like I would do with, like, I would try to have more of a growl when I was talking to, like, older Emmett. <clears throat> yeah, but not, not over the I know. top. Too. Are you using, or, are you using your memories of me to get high? Are you using your memories of me to get high? Let me get this straight. You're using memories of me to get high. So let me get this straight. You're trying to say you're using memories of me to get high. Are you saying you're using your memories of me to get high? Yeah, we, we were tired and I wasn't giving very good performances and we kept cracking up and so it just descended into madness. It got to the point where I lost a lot of hope in the taking the project seriously because I didn't think I, my, I could um, mentally take the stress if we took it seriously. So we had a bit of a breakdown about 3 o'clock in the morning, which is what we say in the it is in the video, I think. Yeah. So we have this whole clip. Father and son are having a bit of an argument, and son gets upset and runs off in a huff, which is kind of where it cuts in. <laughs> no. I, I'm not hungry. I, I'm not hungry. <clears throat> I'm not hungry, and I'm not ready for whatever this was supposed to be. <sighs> what? <laughs> the boom mic was in the shot. I wonder if we should just edit this, like, with really corny soap opera music or something. But but the concept deserves more. I know, but it, the, the footage is garbage. I mean, the... I don't know. Not, not to bum on you, but I'm, I think mine's probably going to be garbage, too. I know. And because we're not professional actors. It's a concept that might be better played in a book if we are going to create it. I was kind of actually thinking that too. <laughs> but yeah, then... and But because I don't want to... I mean, it was more about doing whatever would be peaceful, I suppose. And I don't want to give up. Um, I, I feel like doing it now. Doing something. Okay. Um, but yeah, just the more and more this is kind of going downhill, the more I'm like, well, I mean, we can still have fun with it, but maybe not submit it just so that our, the, the failure of this idea isn't set in stone, then we can be free to experiment with it later. Or would it be something that would be, um, you'd still be too embarrassed to like share it privately within the community or anything? Would you still be embarrassed, too embarrassed to do that? I don't know. Um, maybe see what the final edit is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because <sighs> the way this shot looks, it really looks like some spoof or something. <laughs> Is that maybe some that, bad TV maybe show? Maybe that could work. <laughs> this shot really looks funny. <laughs> <laughs> and just if, if the but the, the whole thing should have been handheld if we were doing that, uh -huh. but with like random zooms <laughs> and stuff. Uh huh. I'm like, because <laughs> we probably got some goofy takes at the door that we could use for a spoof version. <laughs> we could spoof our own idea. <laughs> well, I popped out, so I can't tell if I'm laughing or crying. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, that could honestly end up really funny, but then I really feel like it. If we did just pick the wackiest takes, 
compare it with the corniest music we could find. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to salvage this. Just go completely nuts. <laughs> Maybe the best way of salvaging this <laughs> just make it completely nuts. <laughs> but then at the same time, I feel bad for the concept. Yeah, I think. Oh. <laughs> Especially if like the if the face app didn't work in some scenes, then it would be no big deal. Like maybe touch in and out. Like <laughs> like we could do stuff like that on purpose. Yeah. Add glitches. And maybe Just, like put a mustache on somebody. <laughs> maybe for like one of your friends. <laughs> we also have a smile. Face app presents the memory, but the memory veil is not funny. Story. Maybe we can change the because we never actually say the memory veil in the no. script, so we could. <laughs> Call it the Remembrance Garden. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't have very many goofy takes in the other. In the others. Um. And we can, we, unless he deleted one of them, we can use the, the take at the, the dining table of us. Because there was one that was playing all serious, but then we looked at each other and was like, it just kind of went like that. We could just like, and then we could like, I don't know if this would work, but like, my mind is like, doing that, and then, then like, freeze framing it, and making it look all retro, and if we had some sort of like, retro theme music, and then like, like how old sitcoms would often end with, <laughs> and then freeze frame, and like then we did credits it. would pop up a, a little bit, sort of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Huh. You've been recording for eight months. <laughs> Document the madness, my brother. <laughs> oh, boy. That was our big breakdown. And our thought process following that was to continue with the Remembrance Garden, the spoof version of our own idea. Because it was really the, our only idea we could think of to run with that we were comfortable with at the time since that whole scene was a bit of a crash and burn as a serious scene. Yeah. We filmed a little more my side of the conversation at me trying to act goofy like it was a, a cheesy soap opera and then we filmed your side of the conversation and at that point I was thinking okay I my dream for this would be to like make it like a bad Shamalan movie almost. That's kind of the way some of the dialogue felt. That's just kind of the his weird, more heavy-handed, out of the blue dialogue. But um, That's not, yeah, I do not claim to be a good dialogue writer. I was yeah. just trying to come up with something to work, trying and, to get the point across. Yeah, I guess I don't know when I edited th this together when exactly the Remembrance Garden clip will be. Just the line Emmett was m messing up on the um. Where where's my script? I don't know if we even want to go through that or not. Are you using memories of me to get high? Yeah, that line. For some reason when I wrote that, I didn't see it the same way as I saw it after it was actually performed. Not that you were a bad actor, but just uh -huh. in the context, it felt worse. Yeah, and the, sometimes that happens. Just, yeah, you have something in your head and then you, like, anytime you say something and then you're like, oh, that sounded better in my head. Just that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I had a certain, like, all the lines I was considering, like, them in my head using certain pronunciations. I don't know what, it's not pronunciation, like how someone talks. 
Like when someone's doing an impersonation of someone, like they'll not just impersonate the sound of their voice, but the way they talk, the delivery. It's, yeah, the beat, the rhythm, the... The delivery wasn't the word I was thinking of, but it so works that yeah. I had certain deliveries in my head. So when you would give me different deliveries, since I didn't explain to you, I wasn't being a good director and ex really explaining to you how I wanted the line to be delivered. Uh -huh. Although sometimes like, like I would deliver things based off of what I felt the, um, the emotions were like, I would think about, okay, what would the what would the character be feeling? Then I would try to get myself feeling that. And then what would, how would I deliver the line if I was feeling that? And so then sometimes with the bad acting, it would come from like you telling me to do something different, but I'm like, I don't know where this delivery is coming from though. Mm. Like, cause I can't really relate why, why I would deliver it like that to an emotion. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's tough. We haven't studied acting or anything. Acting. Acting. Sometime I... That's something I wouldn't mind studying, but mm -hmm. I have not. Yeah, the most I do is just... <laughs> just the what I've learned from practicing, from playing my more outrageous roles with my channel, and then, like, sometimes watching YouTube videos, kind of talking about sometimes stuff like that. Like, just more of those, like, not, not clickbaity videos, but just, like, the... Just, oh, this famous person talks about their field and stuff like that so <laughs> you never did finish that treehouse before we moved. You're such a perfectionist. Oh, I waited under that lumber pile for what felt like hours before you finally found me. I don't remember that. Which part? A treehouse? But you were there. It was one of the few times. I know, but I want to make up for it, before it's too late. Are you sick? In a way. Have you ever known you needed to change, but become so afraid to make a mistake that every option you can map out looks like a disaster? So you compromise. Take a path that can guarantee you at least some happiness, even if it lasts for just a moment. Dad, what did you do? Do you remember when you wanted to play the drums? Your mother let you have her old pots so you could practice. I remember. Mom wanted me to get lessons. And you didn't like the noise. I'm sorry. I just remember you happy. It's one of the last memories I have left. What do you mean? I started with fragments I thought were gone. Then little moments I didn't think I'd miss. I was craving more time with you. So I made a machine that allows me to re-experience the joy of my memories by consuming them. Are you using memories of me to get high? I know how it sounds. Oh. I never wanted to forget you. Huh. Please sit down. Your food is getting cold. I am not hungry. And I'm not ready for whatever this was supposed to be. Eddie, please don't go, please. Don't go, please.
I think it was like five when we actually went to bed. I think so, because we just ended up crashing on the couches. Um, yeah, yeah. We didn't even like officially go to bed. We were just like, okay, we're done. And because I was sleeping on your couch and then you just lay down on the other couch. And then just we just fell asleep just without <laughs> thinking about it. And then apparently I had forgotten to sh- shut the garage door and we got woken up by dad walking. in. <laughs> yeah, just walking in two hours later, like, so how's it going, fellas? And we're like, uh, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what you? What have you done? Uh, I mean, it was nice enough. It was nice of him to check in on us. Mm-hmm. Even after we had filmed the spoof version of that one conversation, there was still a lot to be reconciled with other scenes. Uh huh. Because the more I kept trying to think of how we would make some of the other scenes goofy, the more I kept like, this doesn't feel right anymore. Yeah. Especially with the the original idea was to have the father appear to have either like dementia or Alzheimer's. Is that what the son immediately thought mm-hmm. um, when he doesn't remember things? And yeah, just making light of that or making light of self-destructive behavior. Yeah, it just didn't seem... Um, which was, that was Friday night that everything... And early, early Saturday morning when everything else was going on with the breakdown. So throughout the day, Saturday, we were um, still trying to wrestle with the ideas of how to do this if we could go back to being serious. Mm -hmm. That was the point when we decided it would need to be restructured in order to be serious again. Because we couldn't refilm that scene. Yeah. So I think that was the point where we were like, okay, we should probably just cut that out. Yeah, I think at that point on Saturday morning, I had reviewed the footage of the memory veil. And I think that re-inspired me to make it serious. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, oh, well, even though I'm not going to say the footage was like really great or perfect from professional standards or anything, I was just like, okay, this is good for me like i'm like this shouldn't go to waste yeah and throughout that process of writing and maybe filming just thinking about the story there was always like an element of the father not being honest with what was going on that maybe kind of bothered me like it kind of played a little bit into his character that he was trying to reconcile with the son without coming clean all at first so i think that idea led me to think that we should bring the father and son into the um, the clean room. Is that what we're going to call it? I think so. I think that's what we were calling it. Okay. Anyway, the room with that the actual um, experiments take place, or what would you call it? I'm my experiments. Experiments. Okay. So, like, instead of just having them sitting around talking about things, trying to be vague but failing, just have it. Uh, switch and have no dialogue and just be them looking around at everything Mm -hmm. in the room. Because the original script was already going to have the conversation with the son and the father in the living room interspliced with footage of the son going back Mm -hmm. afterwards and just looking around the room and finding the dad already plugged into the machine. And then after the conversation in the living room was over, it was going to basically be back to where the son would be talking to the dad while the dad's plugged into the machine, which is where the center part of the final short film ended up taking place. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of accordion crunched some of it together and deleted a scene. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Or a couple scenes that... Accordion crunch. Accordion crunch. (laughs) Even though, of course, I, I'm no storytelling expert or anything, it was a good learning experience for storytelling that if you feel like you got a lot of exposition or too much telling and not enough showing, then try cutting a few things out and see how it mm-hmm. works. Because, yeah, as long as like we knew what we were doing enough to portray the story, yeah, you don't need as much kind of talking about it like we were kind of forced into a situation where we had to to trust people to arrive at their own conclusions and i think that's a, a good place to be a lot of the times with 
with storytelling that you you don't need to worry that it's not going to come across clearly enough because your audience can figure it out Mm -hmm. in some situations not all the time show don't tell very important kids when was the thing that you wrote down on the clipboard the extra thing that when, might, that might, we could go ahead and say that. When did that come into play? I mean, we could go ahead and say it. So the thing I wrote down was, I noticed, I don't know if it was when I was editing or after, after Blimey Con and everything, I was just re-watching the short, that when we did reshoots in the clean room, which is my dining room, on Saturday, instead of getting back into the clothes we were wearing on Friday night, or at least for me, I don't know what you were wearing if you were wearing the same I only thing. had the one pair of clothes I was wearing the entire week. We oh, wore. no. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, I didn't think about that. I mean, I think I had some some other spare clothes, but I mostly just wore that one get up because that's what we were filming in and that's what I was living in. And I was I was spending most of the, the time over here instead of at my house and I didn't think to bring anything else. Oh, no. Anywho... What I was going to say concerning clothes. I would just put on some clothes to, like, comfortable clothes to wear Mm -hmm. Saturday. And I was like, hmm, it doesn't hurt anything if I don't change back into my other clothes. I'll just wear these for the um, reshoots. And I realized afterwards that I was wearing the same thing I wore in Hello Wall. And you were wearing that plaid, blue plaid shirt in when you were featured in Hello Wall. So it was like we were wearing the exact same things <laughs> as Hello Wall. <laughs> it all comes together. Of course, I put on an over shirt in Hello Wall. I had that V-neck on most of the time, but I woke up in the green short sleeve shirt in like basically these jeans. I think I had, in Hello Wall, I had a Star Wars shirt on underneath. Yeah, but you can't see it. You can't see it. Yeah, so but all you, can, really there. all you can see is your plaid over shirt. That's a nice little over shirt, but I'm worried it's going to start falling apart because cats like to claw on it as I'm wearing it. Considering we were wearing the same clothes for portions of those two films, it kind of makes me wonder if... We could almost consider them in some sort of the same theoretical kind of universe. Like, not that huh. it's canon with each other, like literally, mm-hmm. but like spiritually. Not that they're the same characters. Yeah. So I was almost wondering if, like, should I try to consider what story I would tell as kind of like a... Con- a third part. A, a third part conclusion where we also fit in those clothes somewhere. To make it kind of a wrap up like a huh. first, second, and third act sort of thing where the, the third part really kind of is more of a redemption, like the redemption of the arc or something. Hmm. The clothing saga. The clothing saga, yes. The plaid. The plaid Plaid saga. trilogy. Plaid saga. Plaid. Plaid yeah. saga and green shirt. Because, yeah, like both um, shorts are kind of dealing with themes of self-isolation. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like need to have a a third one sometime and have it be the mm-hmm. the trilogy. That's an idea. It is, as Dad would say. Now you're stinking. Now I'm stinking. So yeah, we'll keep that in mind, I guess. Um, um what, what was the last thing we were talking? Oh about? yeah, we haven't we haven't even gotten to editing yet. Okay, we haven't. We end up getting all the reshoots done Saturday night. I think we finished up around midnight maybe so we got a good amount of sleep that night yeah more normal sleep schedule slightly so that was before church did you stay up rough editing any that night i can't remember um or did we just both go to bed i feel like maybe like because i needed a shower pretty bad so i think like while you were getting ready for bed i just like went through it and cut out any of the blank stuff and then when you were done, I took a shower and then went to bed. Maybe. Okay. Uh, but then, yeah, then our other brother. Did I? I went to church. We both went to church. We both went to church. Okay. I, for some reason, I thought the white had to pick me up. No, I took you to church and right. I was like about to fall over. Yeah. At church. 
I, uh, after church, we got back and I got to editing. My original plan was to get it all, all the editing done I could to know exactly how much face app footage we would need to convert and then convert the face app footage. But about when I had it all kind of put together, but it wasn't really tightened up, I decided maybe we should go ahead and start converting the frames to face app oldness. That was about three, maybe, in the afternoon. I think so. That sounds right. Hmm, I probably should have, we, we probably should have started a little earlier, but then if we started earlier, we may have been tempted to try to do too much. Yeah. Um, and then I would have been less farther along on editing. Uh-huh. That was unprecedented hell. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> unprecedented. Unprecedented, is unprecedentedly a word? It doesn't sound right. Yeah, I want to say no. Unexpectedly difficult, maybe. It was just all my tests, things had gone fairly well. But all my tests dealt with well-lit footage. Well-lit footage and people that were talking fairly straight onto the camera. Yeah, and like only one face on screen. And fairly close to that face. Yeah. So there was a lot of clips that I didn't even really think of it even though i was constantly thinking about keeping my face like pretty straight onto the camera and we had to always think about not having anything transition on or off my face because then face app may not work um so opening and closing the door even though we didn't convert any of those frames that was always something i was really kind of like worried about how to edit or how to film it Mm -hmm. because that's always like a big transition opening and closing the door is automatically transition on and off your face yeah so there was a lot of clips that i was far away but of course i'm not in front of the camera so i can't see how far away i am even though i reviewed all the footage like right after we shot it um to make sure we got everything i signed off on all the footage we shot yeah and face app didn't really care for much of it no no but yeah and because the like it, it'd be easy to say that it was just the certain conditions that were off because there were certain shots that we were as soon as we started trying we're like yeah that was a tricky spot because it um we could tell the conditions weren't good enough but then there were plenty of times where it was working throughout the entire thing and then one or two frames just in the middle of the shot it would not accept and even though they they looked this they, it was the exact same conditions for all the other frames it just didn't want to work with those certain frames and it seemed like every time we would figure out a a way around a glitch then a new glitch would occur so that's why we're developing the conspiracy theories that it it knows and is was trying to actively fight against us because it seemed like it was learning <laughs> how to screw things up for us even though there is one picture that i tried of me that's perfectly well lit that was one of the professional photos that i had taken of me that it it rejected Hmm. so it's not that it just rejected random frames from our video that it actually does reject certain well lit photos but yeah it totally felt like it was working against us Mm -hmm. throughout that process we were constantly cutting down the amount of frames that we were going to convert because at first there was like we cut down maybe 60% of the frames we had originally had, maybe. Maybe. Because we cut I can't remember we sure. cut a lot of shots in half, like literally straight down the middle, because we're like, okay, this this is lingering a little long. Even though I wanted to linger a little long on a few shots, it wasn't going to be feasible to convert all those, because yeah. it was just giving us too much trouble. That a lot of times were the only thing we could do to deal with the frames were just to cut those frames. But that kind of helps... A little bit, because, I mean, it looks jumpy if you're paying attention, because we had to crop out some frames, but it kind of adds to that more eerie mysteriousness a little bit. A little bit. That's what we'll say. That's what, yeah. We'll we'll go with that theory. Yeah, that it works to our benefit. Yeah. Optimism. Yeah. Looking on the bright side, the glass is half full. 
Yes. Of frames. There is a little part of me that hopes FaceApp isn't misusing the hundreds of frames it has of my face now. Uh-huh. Like if, if it's stored for the government. We we un, uh, unwittingly volunteered just all those those footages of ourselves. <laughs> yeah, they claim they delete the majority of the photos that majority they get. Majority was in air quotes. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they've changed their policy since then. I haven't checked up on them in the few months, but I did do some research beforehand when there was a little bit of controversy about if it was, like, safe or not. Mm -hmm. The gist of what I got from my research was that people were scared of it because it was linked to a Russian company. Uh -oh. And I was like, the media is complaining about something that's linked to Russia. What else is no? I basically shut off of anything they were saying at that point. <sighs> anyway, I'm not going to get into that too deep. Just if the worst thing they're doing is keeping a few frames or pictures for everyone else in their servers and everybody's complaining about them keeping pictures on their servers, what do they think social media is? Yeah. That's the whole thing of social Post media. Picture. Like if they, if they don't want pictures of themselves out there, like well, how many different picture sharing sites are there? Just like, oh, hey, here's a selfie or here's a, a photograph or a drawing. Just... I mean, people already knew Facebook misuses information. I don't know how much it does. That's a lot of that is conspiracy theories, but people are pretty certain that they're fishy things go on. So I've got... All the more reason for me not to feel bad that I haven't gotten on any social media yet. Even though your face is on Facebook. <laughs> Whoops. Well, it's your social media. Oh. So, I mean, I mean, because I'm not, I'm not a concerned, worry wart, mm -hmm. conspiracy theorist. I'm just like, eh. Yeah. Don't really need it right now. And if people are worried about apps that analyze your face, Facebook has face detection software built in. If you upload a photo, they log all the faces. And we know this well. Yeah, because when I first created my Facebook account a couple of years ago, I had trouble because throughout my younger years, mom had always uploaded photos of me, which there aren't a ton, but whenever she did, she usually tagged our grandma. So it ended up connecting my face to grandma. So it thought I was stealing grandma's identity when... I created an account and tried to claim my face as my own. Mm -hmm. So my account got deleted or banned a couple of times before I could finally like prove to them that I was me. Yeah, Had to s send them pictures of ID and stuff. <sighs> so that was a deal. A deal? A, th a deal. That was a, th I about said thing, thing and, a and a deal. I do that a lot. Yeah. Combine my words. Anywho, even though after... All that trouble, I have kind of gotten burned off of Face App. Uh huh. Because I, I was planning to do like a lot more kind of like jokey projects of like converting scenes from certain movies or something yeah. um, to be funny. But now I'm like, I don't want to do it. If we get nom flashbacks. Yeah. I think I mentioned this in the breakdown scene. But like part of me still wants to know what type of weird insanity would happen if you like gave someone facial hair or a smile while you were animating them talking mm -hmm. i've always wanted to try the facial hair to see like or just changing the hair to see how it would animate if it would just uh -huh. look stiff as a board the whole time or if it would move at all yeah so what else do we want to say anything about the actual premiere i guess well just maybe reception like what we learned from reception yeah Generally, I think it was pretty positive. The people who liked it really liked it. Yeah. Didn't hear much from people who didn't like it or didn't know what to think of it. Yeah. I don't want to say people, there were people who didn't like it. Maybe there were. They can, they have the right to their own opinion. But um, I had a feeling a lot of people weren't sure what to make of it. Which makes sense because, like, there were a couple other more dramatic ones or at least more you're supposed to be taken seriously. Uh-huh. But, like... Like, in the middle of all these goofy, comic-based videos, then we have this, yeah, artsy, mysterious, high-concept, very vague 
story that is hard to decipher. Going into it, like any res positive reception we got was still just kind of blowing me away because I was anticipating just kind of like a, huh, wh what was that sort of <laughs> thing? Because <laughs> that's uh -huh. kind of what I felt after the experience. Yeah, the reception really saved kind of my, my thoughts towards the film because before that point I was thinking I was still sort of thinking of it as a failure because I was like this doesn't make any sense but then people kind of liked that so like we said there were still a few people who had more serious shorts um because I knew that from other years that there was always a few sh serious short films in their contests so that's kind of what I was um hoping for that we wouldn't be the only ones mm -hmm. our, our film still stuck out from the others yeah, but um, I mean, uh, I'm gl I'm glad it did. For future it left an impact. Yeah, future years, um, I may consider going more comedic, just so we don't alienate the audience. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> and so it's not as stressful as for us when riding. Yeah, very stressful. But I mean, it it paid off because yeah, like I said, I wasn't feeling too. The best thing I could really say was that we got it done, but then, yeah, we ended up winning some awards, and, and anyone we talked to was like, that was cool, so I, I that just kind of <laughs> filled me with like, huh, we, we actually did something that mm -hmm. we can be proud of. And the, like, it was cool seeing everybody else's too, or a lot yeah. of other people did a really good job as well. Mm -hmm. I did, yeah. Don't want to just concentrate on us because yeah that was that was i just really enjoyed the film contest in general seeing all the different how people worked in the elements the parameters and things seeing other people's creative styles is just fun to to think about and mm -hmm. yeah see what people can come up with and i am very thankful that our very vague abstract view of hunger was accepted because i yes. was like a little worried that was one of the things that we we kind of bickered about and yeah because i knew that themes could be taken abstractly in these contests but emmett definitely was the concerned one in yeah that area. That i was like okay but i mean like we had certain lines that connected the two but i'm like okay i still feel like we i mean we can use terminology right like maybe maybe we should increase the the level of connectiveness so that people don't don't <laughs> don't get lost i was really worried that that wasn't gonna work but it did Mm -hmm. And yeah, with the displaying the film on the projector screen, uh, it looked definitely looks different than when you're editing uh, on the computer. Like yeah. it, it looked darker, so it really hid a lot of the the face app artifacts. Mm -hmm. So I am just curious to see what like curious to know what that would be like to see it on that screen for the first time. Like how much someone else could tell if it was off? Because I know some people. People didn't know what to think of it before they knew what exactly the effect was. Mm -hmm. And especially people who may not have known us very well um, or hadn't gotten a chance to meet us or something. Yeah. And I'm sure that with any performance that there's probably a lot of bad takes too, but part of me was felt a little bad that I won acting because then... Part of the reason that it became what it was was because my acting was so bad. <laughs> but and then thinking about that, I was thinking that actually I would I would watch a video of like going through Oscar winning performances and like finding the worst takes possible <laughs> and then like saying like, OK, what what could have happened? <laughs> like surely because surely there's some pretty bad takes out there. That's just part of filmmaking. That if something isn't working, you cut it out. And mm -hmm. that's what part of me was felt like. Eh, maybe we're almost a little two faced. Like, well, everything, everything that's like captured on the camera is put through uh -huh. another filter. Like the camera is a filter in itself of the reality, and then all the footage from the camera is put through another filter of the filmmaker's vision. So it's yeah. the final product is the only thing that I think should really be judged. Uh huh. Um. I just got deep there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I was trying to get an example of what we changed that in that first scene. I couldn't remember what lines we took away or adding. Oh, yeah, because we had to re rewrite the monologue from Emmett 
beside the chair. Yeah. Um, Because it was sort of referencing stuff that happened. In their conversation that we cut. Mm -hmm. So we had, uh, like, in the original version, you say, I guess I should come clean. I didn't tell you everything I remember about that stupid treehouse because they talked about the treehouse. Yeah. And I think I just completely cut that line and had in its stead growing up I was always begging you to let me help with your projects and in the original script we did have the line I was always begging you prodding to let me help with your projects which is a similar line but we just had to we added the growing up so to give it a little more context so it could kind of start out the conversation Mm -hmm. that was the first change I think it stayed pretty consistent for the next couple lines until it gets to okay we added this line i think that this was the line that we really had to add to make it come together if i had realized you were as starved as i was i wouldn't have shut you out that was our line original to the reshoots that i think really helped bring it together and that was the main thing yeah. that um kind of delivered the relation to hunger yeah and I just kind of like how that ended up fitting in with the final video. It's like when the sun is storming out through the curtain. I kind of like that. Just that line played behind that clip. Yeah. So is there anything else we were going to talk about? I had my thing that I didn't know if it was Oh, if you can go ahead and say that. Um, yeah. Just it helped me kind of understand this experience did. Uh, like a concept that I had heard about with some of the the writing videos that I watch. I can't remember where it was originally came from, but in the video from Hello Future Me on prequels, he talked about like death of the author. I don't know whether what you would call it like theory or proposal or something like that. Just like basically just kind of addressing like who has the right to interpret something, either the the author or writer or the the fans. And so then when he was talking about it kind of in the context of like Star Wars, I was kind of against it because it was basically saying like that the once someone puts a creative work out there, then it's up to the fans to interpret it. Not and that like there was a good side to it because it was sort of trying to stop prideful authors from trying to change things sort of like JK Rowling had been doing. But then I was just like, that seems like a lot of power that you're putting in the whiny fans too. If like basically saying the fans are always right and being maybe being an author who's or being a aspiring writer who likes to have creative control is sort of like a oh, I don't want to do that type of thing. But then this experience actually kind of helped teach me the better side of it because like there were some times where people would be like excited about our video and saying how they liked it and talk about certain elements that they thought were interesting and meaningful but then i would sometimes they would be different than how we meant for it to be and so then i would be thinking about it like do we explain it and say that that's no oh no that wasn't how we intended it because like usually the first time i was like oh well kind of like what i was talking about with the acting that i usually have a tendency to be more kind of honest even if it means like kind of saying things that are unnecessary, saying things that, like, I tend to be honest even if it's putting myself down, sort of. So part of me was always, like, feeling like I should correct people so that they didn't like the wrong thing about the film. But then at one point the thought occurred to me that, well, if if that's what they like about it, and they got something out of it that we didn't really intend, even though we did intend it to be up to interpretation, I didn't know if we really had the right to correct them. Like, why Why not just let them believe? Like, the, not too many big details, just little things, like about the cards. I think that was the main thing. I can't remember who exactly it was, but, like, said something about the, like, him writing down the cards as being a happy thing, and we're like, oh, well, <laughs> that was, wasn't exactly that, but, um, yeah, that kind of explained to me what the death of the author thing was about, because I was like, okay, in this circumstance, it makes sense, like, because the whole thing kind of I had more peace when I let it go and I didn't worry about being particular about what it was supposed to be. So it kind of helped me have even more peace with it that I was like, OK, it's out there. People can kind of make up their own decision 
make up their own minds about what it means and what it is. And we we knew what we intended and we made the film, but that doesn't mean that we have to be particular about how to interpret it. Mm-hmm. Have any thoughts? I think that's interesting. I'm glad you stopped me from kind of trying to explain the story awkwardly. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if in like this behind the scenes, if I explain everything, every nuance, every little subtle thing we were trying to do, if that is just some sort of ego or if I should just let it go and let people interpret it as they see and then pick up on any subtle things that they uh, can pick up on. Yeah. Originally, I was wondering before we started recording if we would like go through the script and like cover things. <laughs> I don't think we need to do that. Yeah. Just, yeah, like I was saying at the beginning, that I felt like the best thing to do would just be tell the story of what led to it. Mm-hmm. Not say, not delve into the details of like, oh, this, this is. Oh, the, the conspiracy. Yeah, this this is what's going down. This is what it means. This is this is what we intended. Aren't we so special? <laughs> um, yeah, just, that sounds really yeah. bad. <laughs> uh-huh. That I was just thinking, okay, this this is what happened, and the video is the result of that. Oh, yeah, and mm-hmm. one thing. This is kind of like going back to something I think you said at the very beginning about like that you started with the characters and thought the story would come from there. That I can't remember where I saw this. But I felt like I read something like a quote from somebody saying like how uh, like comparing a full movie or a novel to a short film or short story that like it's it's less about telling a full story and more just kind of like giving a picture of the character sort of. That makes sense. Yeah. So I think and I think maybe our original intention was going a little too much of a full story yeah too much of a full story and so it was kind of good to just i thought that in that sense the abstract root worked because it was just kind of giving a picture of the uh the characters Mm -hmm. okay one thing i thought of was that we need to explain a blooper oh yeah a blooper there's two things that i wanted to explain the footage we used to um, put on the face of the memory ball of young emmett on the drums was footage I had gleaned from an old hard drive that we had from footage we took on an old cheap point-and-shoot camera like way back in the day 10 years ago yeah it was kind of possible even more I mean how old was I in those clips the time stamps at least on the videos which may not have been exactly right because some of those old cameras we didn't have the um the clock set correctly but I think it was 2009 to 2010 Uh, most of those videos so yeah we rediscovered that Emmett did this thing and I do I did not remember this that's like this weird salute I don't know if you were intending it to be kind of like a sort of like like a mic drop (laughs) either a mic drop which would be a better thing or like a a flipping the bird (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or something uh, or I guess I think because one of it is the the pointing at your eyes pointing at the other person yeah. that people would do in movies a lot that I thought was funny like uh, I'm watching you things so I I mm-hmm. don't think I realized that it was supposed to be like an eye watching you just sort of like a like if you're staring someone down you just you do that you point at your eyes then you mm-hmm. point at them but then mm-hmm. I combine that with the the boy scout two fingers <laughs> salute yeah and that was just like just that popped up multiple in, times in multiple videos we were watching and Emmett didn't have that many videos on the hard drive because I think we may have not let him have the camera that much which is probably sad but your videos I mean part of why my videos weren't that good is because uh, I wouldn't have you guys <laughs> to help me out you can, yeah. I mean we were probably yeah. mean and didn't want to help him it with was his videos kind of just the natural big brother little brother situation where you guys had your more actual ideas and then i was just like hey that looks fun can i join in and mom would probably make us give you the camera uh-huh. which is probably a good thing to share teach mm-hmm. teach sharing but yeah it's funny sometimes like i would be so obsessed with really wanting to uh, get up in your guys's trends like if you guys were into something i wanted to be into it because i thought it looked so cool but then actually sometimes because you wouldn't let me join in then i ended up being interested it interested in it longer and then 
actually ended up like kind of del developing it further a little bit maybe now i can't remember any of the the examples that i had thought of but like like i didn't grow out of the phase as quickly so then i did more now i can't remember what i was gonna lead that to but mm -hmm. like well, like with video making or i mean you have I, the most successful yeah. youtube channel of any of us now <laughs> <laughs> well i mean that that doesn't have as much to do with it but Yes, like with does. like with um I feel like some some of my like crafty stuff which I guess led to the the YouTube video but um like it, it started cuz like oh you guys are doing crafts oh I want I want to I want to make stuff you guys are are telling stories or making videos I want to do that and so then that led to to me being a little more adamant about it so mm -hmm. yeah you even though you guys like there's there's things I could nitpick about um older brother troubles that it all served a purpose yeah it's probably a lot of embarrassing things about how i treated you <laughs> and i'm sure embarrassing things about how i acted because i was like i was moody and manipulative while still being oblivious and dorky at times so i know there are things that i i'm at fault too but mm -hmm. the other thing i was gonna say was that explain the ball the ball oh yeah the mysterious ball yeah in early stages of development, I was wondering if the dad would dig up a picture frame in the memory veil and like break it and then get the picture out and then the picture would move or something, or maybe not the picture would move because that would be hard to animate. But mm -hmm. Then at one point we had like items that represented the memories. Yeah. Like digging up the um, chopstick drumsticks and then flashing back to mm -hmm. him playing the drums. But then... But then... I remembered this um, thing that we actually dug up from the ground. Was it on our property? I want to say Boulder Hill. Boulder Hill. Or no, maybe it was on your property. I just know you and Wyatt went somewhere in the fields, either exploring the the Boulder Hill, which was just, yeah, relative's land that we would go dig up rocks and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, or uh, maybe you were cutting thistles or something. So yeah, I don't know what it is it's like heavy it's made of rock or marble or something yeah. and it's like it has these little almost like the rings around a baseball it has these little rings or around like it. uh like a basketball basketball or, yeah that's the one that has the, the or volleyball volleyball or something it's something got, like it has, has these weird patternist rings yeah it has manufactured it. lines around it that couldn't uh -huh. have been made naturally um, so it, it Maybe has it's a to, treasure planet map and we never yeah. tried to unscrew it. <laughs> <laughs> it had to have been manufactured somewhere, but we found it out in a field somewhere or yeah. uh, just out in the wild and dug yeah. it up. It actually came from the ground <laughs> <laughs> as far as we know. So I just think it's interesting that we used it as a prop of something that was dug up. It all comes together. Mm, full circle. Oh yeah, we, we had bought some food for this venture and we we're planning on eating some pizza cooking up a frozen pizza when we were done with the video but the video ran so late and we only had like 10 minutes left to the the mid midnight deadline and we were rushing and we, we had to upload it and then afterwards we were so stressed and tired that we we didn't want we just worked through supper and we didn't want to eat i think i made hot pockets for each of us yeah i wouldn't have let us go without supper yeah you made hot pockets but we didn't want to to Make a pizza. The, yeah, take the time to do that. And so then we we were looking for lunch before recording this video, and we are like, hey, pizza. Yeah. So so we did eat the pizza when we were done with the video, in a way. Yeah, the pizza we was bought probably back in July. Uh-huh. And that's one thing, I just the uploading process, that the Face app was so cantankerous and just didn't want to be helpful and ended up messing with the face app till about 10 30 i think was when it was so i hadn't finished editing before we started the face app conversion so i just had like maybe an hour maybe 45 minutes before the deadline that i wanted to at least have it exported and have enough time to upload it because I didn't really know how long it would take to upload it because I was running on new internet that uh, is faster than our home internet, but I hadn't tested it yet to see really how how fast it would go. 
So yeah, I think it ended up just taking about 10 minutes to upload at that point, but I think it was after 11.30 when we actually got it exported. So it was uploading. I think I may have started to calm down a little bit, but when we were finishing editing and trying to make the title at the end, just the memory veil, I was freaking out so much, I couldn't even remember how to make text in Premiere. So Emmett had to stand behind me and help me figure out, um, because I was probably the one who taught him about everything he knew, except for things he's learned since. And he ended up having to be the... He became the teacher and in that moment. I don't really remember that. But yeah, I know that like anytime I thought I was freaking out, then I was like, okay, when other people are freaking out, it's easier to be calm. Yeah. So whenever I would see how freaked out you were, that would instantly kind of like settle me down a little bit. You were the rock. So that that let me balance out you mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. I'm not going to go into every detail, but I was definitely near the point of hyperventilation by the time we got it done and like mm -hmm. it took me a little it took me several minutes after submitting it and like uh, just to be able to calm down i think immediately after i sub finally submitted it i um i'm not gonna go into that detail but I, I will edit this out edit this out okay i immediately had to poop a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah it just it was building up. It was all like the tension. I don't because I hadn't realized that I needed to go until like that really nervous moment, uh -huh. like right when we were uploading. Then I was like, "Oh, I need to go." Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Nerves. We did get it submitted in time, and like I at least wanted to um, color grade it a little bit before we submit it. But yeah, that was one thing I had to just skip because I had didn't have any more time to edit after the face app than just the essential basics. So, so yeah. the sound yeah. is... Could have used some audio yeah. tweaking. I don't know if... Did you ever hear that? I don't know if I ever showed you. You never showed me like a before and after. I just knew the basic principle of what could have been done. To the audio? Yeah. Because I did put some effects on it to make it sound a little better, but just the background noise was like coming in and out as the clips were cut. Uh -huh. I, I didn't hear it on the, the speakers, but I heard it on headphones, and then you couldn't hear it in the theater, I don't think. Yeah. And even people who were set, sitting up closer, I don't think, mentioned anything about the audio sounding bad. But yeah. So yeah, when I uploaded it to YouTube, I didn't end up color grading it at all, but I did make sure to try to fix the audio. Yeah, I'm still not sure if I'll release a color graded version or not because it doesn't make that big of a difference because um, it's not like it was shot in any sort of raw or log format, which is, you don't know what any of that means. Well, you talked about raw photographs, so uh -huh. I knew that, that's, that it's just where it can be edited better, yeah, more precisely, and so it looks better. Mm -hmm. And then log is where it looks very, like, low contrast and the, like, doesn't have many colors and has to be um, color graded or have mm. a LUT put on it. Do you know what a LUT is? That log had a child. No. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I mean, I don't have a camera capable seagulls. of shooting. And... Yes, I know it's okay. seagull. I know it's <laughs> seagulls. Sure. I got the reference, but it was like, what does this have to do you were with... You talking about logs and what logs become and I was like... Well, I logs don't... don't become LUTs. They need a LUT in, order to, look, LUT. Oh. in, in order to look regular because they don't look regular unless you put a LUT on it. And same thing with raw. Anyway. I'll take um, your word for it. Okay. I don't have a camera capable of shooting log even though I do have... On my ADD, I downloaded the preset of the EOS HD... C log, which isn't actually log, it's just most supposed to replicate log, but I didn't I'm glad I didn't film in that just to make it easier so I didn't need to color grade hmm. I just shot in Canon's neutral color preset yeah, all this technical it's very technical so the the footage is basically untouched um, color wise yeah. from what it was out of camera mm -hmm. so all the the work about lighting paid off because it doesn't look bad. Yeah, but learning about lighting. Yeah, it was nice. 
you it's good that you know your stuff because I don't you don't know your stuff I mean I I know a little bit just you've always been better at learning like the technical stuff like I know I learn from what I actually do and I I have to think about things more practically in order to understand them and you think about them more technically like you're much better at studying things and then kind of knowing where to go from that. I'm not good at studying things and then <laughs> knowing what that actually means in real life. Hmm. Is that basically... We've covered the gist. I think so, yeah. It may not be too pretty, but I think we at least covered everything except going into the story, which was something I th- I'm probably good we don't. Yeah. Okay. I hope this made sense and wasn't completely un- unstructured. I mean, it's a little less structured than I had hoped, but... Mm-hmm. It's been so long, we had to get talking for a little bit before we remembered things about it. Yeah, it probably would have been better to do it in August, but Mm -hmm. it didn't. I mean, it just, things were happening. Yeah, didn't have much time. We were still settling down from all the the craziness that was happening in July. Yeah, it's really, it's a good experience, though. I feel like Mm -hmm. I learned, I learned a few things, or at least... Okay. One thing I wanted to mention that it was really hard to go back and edit anything to do with this just because of how tough the situation was. Because I know that I've heard of directors who don't want to revisit their past work and I'd never quite understood it. Not that I'm saying this is like exactly like a situation like making a actual movie and i've always understood being insecure about your past work but like it was basically instantaneously i was uncomfortable with going back (laughs) and looking at things because it was so like looking at the not all the footage like the bloopers were fun to look Mm -hmm. at um but just doing work related to this like i felt done with it Mm, yeah i felt like i shouldn't be devoting much more time to it and i know what I was talking about other directors is that like I've heard when their movie when they see like their movies on TV they all change the channel immediately because they don't want to see it again because like we spend so many hours reviewing our videos or at least I do that like some things like usually Mm -hmm. usually it'll be fun to watch it with people to see their reactions to things but I'm numb to it because I've spent so much time with it and that's like a like a half an hour to an hour long video at the most so if you're working on like a like a full movie with all that those inner workings you probably get tired of it yeah and uh it's often sometimes fun to watch with people you're close to like immediate family or friends Mm -hmm. but then like really having like a premiere in a theater with over 100 people that most of them you don't really know very well yeah it's a different experience yeah definitely i was on the edge of my seat watching the film basically with new eyes um Mm -hmm. in front of all those people that can like you're seeing it through the eyes of the audience i've heard of that before directors explain it kind of like that when they actually premiere work in front of people Uh that's a different experience like uh thinking something versus saying out loud sometimes you're like oh that sounded different out loud that for some something about having other people around Uh makes you more sensitive to some of the the things that could possibly be an issue. And already being a person who's very sensitive to what other people think, Uh um, it's definitely uh, makes it more visceral, I guess. I'll use that word. Pretty interesting experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess we should wrap this thing up. We probably covered about everything we need to. Yeah, don't really need to say much else. All right, so if you've stayed this far. Thank you. Yes, very much. Thank you. I'm glad you found this interesting. Hopefully it will be more interesting when I actually edit it. Hopefully. Because Hopefully right... it won't be three hours because right now it's like three hours at the button. So. Yeah. I hope it can get under an hour. Hope so. I don't know. I don't know either. There were some blank spaces, but we talked a lot. Yeah. I mean, we rambled a lot about things that weren't really relevant, so. Okay. This is... Tucker Hervey. We didn't even introduce ourselves. We did not. Well, I mean, we assumed that anyone who knew what was going on, any like anyone who saw behind the scenes of the memory veil probably yeah. 
would have known. But still, there might be some people who don't know us apart yet. Yeah. Our voices. I'm Tucker Hervey. I'm Emmett Hervey. And we're signing off. Or something. Goodbye. Goodbye. Do your Kronk impression real quick. Goodbye. What does he do? Does he have a, a farewell? I don't know what to say right now. Uh, that not, a, not as good as yours. I don't know what to say right now. Well, that's not really as good as yours. <laughs> so, uh, well, if you didn't know before, Patrick Warburton was sitting next to us the entire time. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. So long. Yeah. Yeah. The, the poison. The poison for Cusco. I don't... I mean, I'm a little deeper than you, but I still don't have as good a <coughs> delivery uh, as you. Uh, uh, the poison. The poison for Cusco. The poison specifically made to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. That poison? Yes. Let's see. Uh, My shoulder, Angel. I... He's going to lead you down the path of righteousness, but I'm going to lead you down the path that rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's got that silly little harp thing. Or a silly little musical thing. We've been over this. It's a harp. Okay, that's a harp. And that's a dress. Robe. <laughs> you uh, memorized this a lot more than I have. <laughs> it, well, it's a movie that kind of deserves that. I know it deserves it, yeah. but... I mean, I probably haven't seen yeah. it as many times as you, maybe. Uh-huh. I don't know. Wow. Who would have thought that that trap door was laid up here? Uh, uh, mission accomplished. <laughs> that, this is, this has been mission accomplished. Hey, Eddie. Is it really you? Is, is it really you? Is it? You've really grown up into a full grown no. man. <laughs> I hope you like take it. What's in there? That's where I work, son. <laughs> Keep your nose out of it. <laughs> oh, what's with that? Oh. oh, that? That's where I work. I work like a man. I know, I'm forgetting every, every nuance I had thought of. Cause yeah, we're not nervous enough around each other. We need to like do it in our underwear or something, but that wouldn't be appropriate. Let's be like some. <laughs> now I got that image in my head. The entire thing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big reveal. We're not wearing pants. <laughs> Oh, that, that's, uh, that's where I work. Oh, that, that's where I work. It's honest work. You never did finish that treehouse before we moved. You're such a perfectionist. I hunted her you never did finish that tree house before we moved. You were such a perfectionist. I hid under that lumber pile for hours, waiting for you to show up. <laughs> I hid under that. <laughs> I waited under that lumber pile for what felt like hours before you finally found me. Are you sick? <laughs> yeah! Have you ever known you needed to change, but 
become so afraid to make a mistake that every map becomes an ocean that you have to swim across to find the tiniest bit of happiness on the other side. Your food is getting cold. Eddie, please don't. Please don't go. Please. Please don't go. Please don't go, Eddie. Eddie, please. What have I done?